Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another session. In this video, we are going to learn what is PLC. This is going to be a very beginner guide where you will understand what are the basic components in PLC and what is the PLC. If you don't have any idea about PLC and you want to get started, this video is right for you. Let's start with what is PLC. Okay, so it's like a bread that is in industry that's going to decide what to do. And if, for instance, so there are a few measurement devices that are actually connected there, like what we call it instruments. And then yeah. we got in some final control elements like <clears throat> control walls, lights, and all these things that are connected there. And PLC is actually a decision maker device in between that acts like a brain. PLC major components, if we talk about that, the first one is a PLC processor. Uh, when we talk about processor or controller, it's a brain. Like when we talk about PLC, PLC is component. Uh, it has many other components along with that processor or anything. So it's not only processor. It's like it have IOs, it have power supply, it have a chassis, it have a programming software, network interface. These all things connect together to make a PLC system. So when we talk about PLC system, there are five basic major components that we have in any PLC. The number one on the list is PLC processor, which is, again, the brain inside the PLC. Uh, okay. When we talk about, these are all the things that, uh, that uh, requires clear clarification because might be you know that already and you're not able to you know, uh, express it in the right word. So, that's why we have this particular session where we are going to talk about the basics that we have uh, mm -hmm. for the PLC. So when we talk about processor, the main purpose of the processor, a controller is uh, to store the control program and data in its memory. And the second thing is it's going to read the status of connected input devices. Like when we, when we talk about processor CPU or processor or controller of a PLC, the main job is it's going to hold the program what you're going to write into the PLC. And then not only that, it's going to read what's coming from the feed, like what is the temperature, what is the pressure, what is the level. These all instruments are, you know, if it is a switch or something, status of some device, then it's going to be connected uh, to the PLC through input devices, right? So it's going to yes. read the status of the connected input devices and for sure, whatever the program you have written into that PLC processor, the processor job is to execute that control program. Okay, like we would be we would be writing too many programs in our sessions, which are going to be coming sessions that we would have. Then uh, <coughs> this 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 is going to be the job of the control pro. Uh, you know, your processor or your controller to read and execute the control program. And for sure, whatever logic that you have implemented, that requires some final action or some sort of activity to be done uh, from the processor. So that is gonna be a thing that is gonna be connected, commands connected to the output to change state based on the con control program execution, right? For instance, you need to turn on the light, you need to turn on the fan, you have to adjust the speed, you have to open up a close control wall, or you have to adjust the temperature. These all sort of things are going to be done by your uh, you know, output devices. And these instructions, what to do, would be coming from processor or controller. This is where most of the people are not 110% clear. What is the need of input and output module? I have few folks which have, you know, who have a vast experience working with the PLC, they come in and join the advanced automation course or advanced PLC training. But when I ask them the basic question, what is input module and what is output module? Why we need it? Why not directly connect it to CPU or processor? They are not able to actually answer that. So, so the thing is, sure. uh, physically, the purpose of input module or output module is to physically connect to the field devices. It's an interface between your field elements. But the question is, again, why we need interface? So I will come up uh, and answer this question also. 
So there is one guy which is called input module. Okay, you see here, the field elements have uh, some sort of maybe, you know, digital signals, which are 24 volt or zero volt. It can have a four to 20 milliampere signal or zero to 10 volt signals. But when we talk about PLC or PLC processor, that's something that is going to understand, which is a processor and processor is like a computer, which understands zeros and one, which is understand the digital logic. That's why we got an input module, which is going to, whatever the signal is coming from the field, that would be electrical signal, right? It would be either yeah. 120, 24 volt, 4 to 20 milliampere, 0 to 10 volt. That signal need to be converted into digital signal. Okay? Yes. That Because your PLC processor understands only digital logic. That's why whatever is coming from the field, this is going to be electrical signal that need to be converted into the digital signal so that your processor can understand what's coming from the field devices. So this is the main purpose of input module. So let's talk about that. What are the field devices that can be connected to input module? It can be connected to switch. It can be connected to pressure transmitter. It can be connected to temperature transmitter, vice versa. So the whole purpose, you understand it already, that it converts the real world, world voltage and current signals to the signals that PLC can understand. And when we talk about different types of input module, there are two possibilities. Either input module can be discrete or analog. When we talk about the discrete, discrete means anything, but it is going to be either high or low, open or close, you know, status of some devices, whether it's running or it's not running. So these all signal which have two states are gonna be discrete, on off, open, close, these all things lies under the umbrella of discrete. So for discrete IOs or for discrete signals, you're gonna require digital input module. And for analog, which are continuously varying signals that are coming from the feed, for instance, temperature, level, pressure, these all signals require to have analog module. So analog modules uses the word to represent the state of device. Like it have five, nine, 10, 100, 20, like that. So different words that are there, which is continuously changing variables, normally like temperature, pressure, flow. So when we talk about uh, discrete and analog, so can you give me some examples apart from it, what we discussed about discrete and analog? Any example, Do you need any... Uh, yeah, any example from the field, like what sort of instruments you have encountered in your life, which are discrete and... We have, we have several yeah. instruments, even the relays are uh, discrete, okay? Either it is okay. Uh, DI or DO, both yeah. are, in the both situation, it is discrete. And okay. uh, the wall feedback, especially for the blowdown and the ESD walls, the mm -hmm. pump running status, pump off status, and okay. there are sort of other things that we are just getting the status whether it is on or off. Sometimes gotcha. even it is uh, even uh, in between in the advanced technique we are using it four to twenty milliamps against. We are setting it the alarms either for high or low. It is also a kind of discrete. It is the basic input is four to twenty milliamps, but against mm -hmm. it is sending a signal for discrete something to be against the alarm. It is high or low. So some sort kind of gotcha. action it is going to happen. So this gotcha. is a combination. Gotcha. That's all we are using it in the industry. Good. So uh, I think you're clear about that. So can you just summarize why we need an output module? Again, like uh, referencing to why we need input module, you can answer that. Like you can use as a reference input module, why we need an output module. Uh, see the the field inputs we are getting it it's uh, we are getting it from the input module and the plc is sending their commands or it's directing uh, the action it's need the output module okay. to deliver their signal what kind of mm. what sort of things it is writing it is in the logic it is digital as you already mentioned so we need yeah. to send it a signal either it is a 24 volt dc or it is just a dry contact or mm -hmm. it is a four to 20 milliamps, it's need to be converted from digital to the 
signal what, what kind of signal we are standard yeah, we are digital using. to analog that's going to be yes. the right word it's, so it's, yeah you're right digital to analog is required. to convert yeah it had to convert into the electrical signal because your final elements like when we talk about control walls fan motors they're not going to understand zeros and ones they only understand what is you know what what's supposed to be like electrical signal so a standard yes. signal so that's why we need an output module and i hope you might know these all things already but it's just a quick refresh just to give you a concept 110% clarity on all the aspects that we have so there are a few examples that, that are that that you can use why we need an output module and what are the devices that can be connected to the output module like you can see here fan you see light you see a wall control wall yes it is good to okay. remind these all the things <laughs> <laughs> so and I, I know uh, me before we dig into you know all other programming details it's very important to have a quick refresher about all these things because uh, might be in some of the interviews you might be tricked with these questions like uh, what is the main purpose you might know what is that uh, input and output module but what the pe people want it here from you that's what i want to say here so uh, okay. power supply why we need a power supply you know that any electronic device definitely uh, to labor work, work properly needed a power supply similarly power supply is needed to provide power to plc and other ion modules what yes. sort of the power supply is needed normally it's required 24 volts and uh, when we talk about what is programming software this is again rs logic uh, 5 uh, when you see here it's a different software but what we would be using it's going to be different um, this might be for 500 uh, rs logic 500 but would we we would be using i will definitely give you introduction shortly on that that would be a different software, but what is the programming software? This is the intent of this particular topic or this headline. The software that requires a PC, uh, that requires, uh, you know, like you need a software for sure to program any PLC and connect and, you know, download any program into that. So different PLCs have a different software. So like you see, there's a TIA portal software, which is open up on your screen at one end, which is a programming software for um, almost all the Siemens PLCs, like 200, 300, 400, 1200, 1500, and vice versa. So this is yeah. the Chia portal software, which is right, you can see there on the screen, this one. And yes. then you have a programming software that are, you know, different PLCs have a different software to program them. So that's the main intent of a programming software. We would be talking about Alan Bradley shortly, so I would definitely guide you about what sort of software we would be using and how we would be using it. So network interface, can you guess it what it is and why we need it? Uh, network interface, we use it for uh, when we are connecting more than one PLCs, we are using it. And uh, also when we are connecting any HMI, also we need to connect it some engineering station or yeah, sometimes some... even we need to use it remotely. So it's new network interfacing card. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So network interfaces definitely have a ability to communicate. This is the, you know, normally that the same port, which is ethernet port where you actually connect. You know, on your yes. laptop or PC to any Ethernet or internet, or, you know, like if in the case you have a land internet or wide internet, so you're going to be using a network interface card for that as well, or you call it network interface. So similarly, PLCs have that one also. If we see it quite clearly, this is something what I'm talking about. This is native interface that helps you or helps the PLC to talk to other devices on the network. That devices can be some systems, some IOs, some PC or HMIs. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. this is one of the one of the example where you got in some control panel. 
So this is in Clayer where you have all the devices connected that would include network interface modules, wiring from the field, backplane, power supply, PLC controller, IO modules. So this is the main you know, place where you would have all the installations that's required. Oh, okay, so just uh, when we talk about set, there are two different control mechanisms. One is centralized control and another one is a distributed control. When we talk about centralized control, it refers to the control system where single PLC controls all IOs and perform all the controls functions for entire system. For instance, you, might, you can see here, there are three different areas here, and these are gonna be connected to one single PLC. What would happen if in the case one PLC is gonna, well, this PLC is gonna fail? Definitely, if uh, this is the uh, main processor, then what whole system is entire, going to stop. Entire yeah, system entire down. operation. Yeah, this one, this one, this one, the entire operation is gonna be stopped. What we can do to avoid that? Can you guess? Uh, yeah, then definitely we need a redundancy. What we need is we need to have a multiple controller instead of one. So we put in three different areas that have each area have its own controller. So what happens if in the case one controller fails, it's not gonna affect other areas. You understand the point? Yeah. Like for instance, this guy is gonna fail. It have nothing to do with this one. The operation of this one would continue. And when this will fail, these two would be running. So that's the purpose of distributed control mechanism or distributed control a concept that exists in our, like we when we extend our discussion to the DCS systems, that is actually one of the key things to start with because this is a concept and DCS is made on actually this concept. So what is the purpose of this particular, or what's the benefit of this controller? Uh, this mechanism is uh, like one, one, for instance, if one of the guy here fails, it will not, uh, you know, stop entire operation. It would not stop all the, all the, you know, production line. That's all for today. If you like this video, consider hitting the like button. And if in the case you haven't subscribed this YouTube channel, consider subscribing. Until next video, take care and Allah Hafiz.